Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to part 3 of Tamiya's M10 Tank Destroyer build. This video is in collaboration with Scale Modeling Now, which is an online model magazine and tutorial resource. A link to that website in the description of this video. So in part 3 we're really going to be focusing on the weathering of our tank destroyer. And that's going to be everything from oil dots right up to pigment uh, weathering to get a really muddy and battle worn effect. So we're going to begin with some dot filters. So we're going to be using three artist oils for this. Titanium white, yellow ochre, and sap green. Also, since we're dealing with solvents and oils, we're going to use, uh, we're going to protect our skin with some gloves. I'm also going to use, use a, a scrap piece of cardboard as our palette. Two soft white bristle brushes for applying our artist oils and for blending our oil dot filter. Also to apply, apply said oil dots, I'm going to use a, a toothpick or a cocktail stick as a, an applicator. And then we need some solvent to uh, work with our oils. In this case, we're using artist spirits. I would recommend buying a big liter can rather than a small I think 350 mil job that's far cheaper to buy in bulk than in the small cans. Just a money saving tip there. So to prepare our oils, I'm going to start agitating the tubes just to mix the pigment and oils together. And I'm just going to lay down some dollops of the individual paints onto our cardboard palette. You don't need too much. Um, this technique doesn't require a lot of oil, just a, a medium sized dollop is more than enough. And the cardboard will start absorbing the excess oil in the pigment. So what we'll normally do is we'll leave these paints on the cardboard for about three or four hours, if not a bit longer, and it'll start to absorb the excess oil before we use it. So you can see how the oil has been absorbed into our, our cardboard after a couple of hours. So I'm just going to uh, decant a small amount of Artist White Spirit. I'm going to take one of our white bristle brushes. So it's important that we don't mix these br brushes. So one brush will only be used to apply the White Spirit to the surface of our model that we've pre-glossed, if you remember from the last video. So I'm going to prepare the model by just moistening it with white spirit and then I'm going to take our cocktail stick and I'm just going to start applying dots of titanium white, of yellow ochre and sap green to the whole side. I tend to do it in sections, it just makes it a little bit more manageable. So I'm going to take our second wild br bristle brush, moisten it in white spirit, and I'm just going to start pulling in one direction to create these streaks. Now they look very stark at the moment, so don't panic. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep cleaning my brush and then just dip it a little bit into white spirits again and just keep blending it. Just keep pulling my brush in a downward motion and I'm just blending back those white, um, those oils, should I say, those dots. and. We should it be given with a very light residue and this is simulating rain streaks, um, sun bleaching and other like atmospheric weathering. And you can see it's really after like blending everything down it's also blend all the chips together. And you can just keep adding more and more white spirit to it and blending it until it is as subtle as you want it. And again, I'm just going to do it section by section using the exact same method, being careful not to mix up my brushes. So one brush is for applying the white spirit and another brush is for blending the oil dots together. And it's very important that we don't mix those together.
again, ensure that your model has been gloss coated before you do this step. I often get questions that people say, I tried dot filters and it doesn't work. The, and the first thing I'll ask them, did you gloss coat your model? And they go, no, I matte coated it or I satin coated it. You can get away with, with satin, a satin coat on your model to some extent, but really gloss, you have to gloss it. Otherwise, the surface tension hasn't been broken and the, the oil streaks can't flow over the model. It's like coating your model in glass. Ensure that your gloss coat it has been laid and also it's been allowed to dry fully. If it's still wet when you do this, you will destroy your, your finish. So ensure that you allow that gloss coat to dry for about 24 hours before you do this. I'm also going to give the turret a, a quick dot filter as well. And you can really apply these dot filters on either the horizontal or vertical surfaces. Some modelers will say you can only really put these on the vertical surfaces of a model. In reality, you can put them anywhere. Ultimately, what you're just trying to do is you're trying to add visual interest to the paint to you or the color you or saturation of your model. Just try to break up that monotone effect as well as tone everything together. So I will put it on the places that sometimes traditional modelers might not put it, like putting a dot filter on a horizontal surface. Both are equally valid. They do give you very nice effects either way, regardless where you put them. Just make sure that you blend them down and try not to make them too stark. Again, when it comes to oil, subtlety is your best friend. So just take a little bit of time and blend it down. Oils are very forgiving. They, they take a long time to dry and you can keep reanimating them and reactivating them with uh, applications of white spirit. So I'm also doing a little bit of uh, a filter here as well by just taking a small amount of oil paint directly onto my brush and I'm actually just painting it on to some of the horizontal surfaces. I did that on the third just to experiment and that's another technique you can do. But again, make sure you blend it, make sure there's no brush strokes or anything like that it's very easy to do that type of effect where you paint on a small amount of oil onto your model uh, let it dry and come back and look at it because sometimes you will get uh, brush marks that you might miss at first so now i'm going to start working on making up um, an oil wash so i'm taking some 502 octylon shadow brown wash i'm just taking a tea light holder here just use as a palette and I've applied quite a bit of white spirit, artist white spirit into the mix to get this type of consistency. And we're going to do this, we're going to use this color for doing panel lines and pin washes. So I've already gloss coated this model yet again. So it's very important that you gloss coat in between layers. Um, I don't want to run the risk of accidentally reactivating the pin dot filter we've done underneath this. And exactly the same as a dot filter, I'm taking some um, artist oils and dampening the areas I want to put my, uh, my, my oil wash into. So I'm just going to start focusing on any recessed panel lines, any parts of the hull that stand out that cast a shadow or have an outline. As you can see here, I'm focusing on the rivets and the retaining bolts on the transmission cover. Now 
I don't my mixture doesn't have enough white spirit that's why it's not flowing so if it's not flowing just add more white spirit to your mixture but even if it's messy like this we're going to come back later and uh, once this is dry and with a clean brush we're going to wipe away the excess with some white spirit that's the beauty of oils it allows you to do this you can be messy and then later on you can come back and clean it up with uh, a brush a clean brush with white spirits it's it's that versatile Really what I'm doing here is I'm trying to add shade and shadow and also try to create like a 3D effect just to uh, draw attention to the fact that these details have like a, a quality of their own that they're, they're not just a part of the vehicle if you will they're welded on and I want to create like a shadow and grime around them just again to help define the various details of this model. But once again it's very important that we prepare the surface with a small amount of white spirit before we layer a wash. It just helps the capillary action and lets everything flow as you can see here. Again, touching into these well lines, the retaining um, bolts for the tow cables as well as the turret ring. Any, any place where there's like rays or, or sunken detail, or any time there's like a boundary line, um, all I'm really doing is I'm using this wash to frame the various details and qualities of this model. Now this is going to be a long step, and even though this is somewhat sped up and edited, this did take a few hours to do. There's no real fast way of doing this. If you want to do it right, you have to just invest a little bit of time, maybe an afternoon, and just work on it. Again, we're working with white spirits as a solvent base, so make sure you have a well-ventilated room. Um, as these fumes are not good for you, so it best get that safety warning out of the way. Uh, these fumes are intense, even though Arctic soils are not as intense as industrial white spirit. Do not use that by the way, you will melt your model. Uh, I've used it in the past and got away with it and then got burnt by it. It melted one of my, uh, one of my build projects about a year or two ago. And since then, even though I spend that extra bit of money, I just use artist oils. It's a finer grade, it's not as aggressive as industrial white spirit. And uh, don't make the mistake, don't, don't uh, save a few pennies to cost you pounds when it melts your model. Again, I'm giving all these bolt heads a bit of attention here with this uh, shadow brown wash. And again, you can see I applied a bit too much and I just used my brush to soak up any excess, as simple as that. This is a very forgiving uh, medium to work with. And if it's too stark like it is here, I'm going to let that dry. And again, we're going to come back later in a later step and clean up all this and blend it to the point we're happy with. Oil lets you do this. Acrylic or enamel. Well, enamel will to a lesser degree, but oils are the most versatile and they're the most forgiving. They allow you the most flexibility and freedom when working. A lot of people are kind of scared of using oils. You, you really shouldn't be. They're actually the easiest medium to work with, as long as you prepare your surfaces correctly. And that's where your gloss coats come in. I'm also going to touch in some of this oil wash into the um, the track cleats here. Again, just add a bit of definition and shadow to them. It's just a way of making various details pop and blend them and make them a bit more interesting.
So with the various hull panel lines done, we're also going to start applying this wash to our, our um, suspension buggies. And I'm actually just going to apply this wash kind of heavily into any of like the recessed or sunken details. This is just going to represent grime, grease and oil from the uh, suspension buggies. These are going to get very heavily weathered later on, so I'm not going to be too, uh, too careful with this. So now with everything dry to the touch, we're going to start coming back and cleaning up any of the overspill we got with the oils. And for that I'm just going to use a Q-tip or a cotton swab or cotton bud, depending on whatever any way you want to call it. And I'm just going to dampen it and dip it into some white spirit. And the same here with this clean brush as well, that's just been moist in white spirit. And I'm just blending away any of the excess, but I'm also turning them into a streak, I'm pulling in one direction as well, to represent maybe a little bit of oil streaking as well. You know. It's, so you can, you can both clean up and encompass that into uh, another weathering effect. And you can see it just immediately just evaporates once it comes into contact with um, the white spirit once again. And again, I'm just going to turn that into a bit of a streak and just clean that up a little bit. If it's too stark or too heavy, you can just keep blending it back until it almost disappears. It's really up to you on how stark you want things. So with our oils out of the way, let's start painting in some of our stowage that we put on. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, we're going to fairly fire through this. So for this large roll or tarp here, I'm just going to use some English uniform. This is from Filejo Model Color, and I just tin this down with a bit of water. Try to keep these colors somewhat drabs and earthly colors. I don't want them to be too bright and compete or clash too much with the tank. Yes, you you can use like captured civilian tarps or civilian clothing that often like these tanks might have to, to add splashes of color, but be a bit careful with it and think about it before you do it. Uh, we don't want to create a nice story either. Again, for this tarp back here, I'm just going to use some. Uh, intermediate green again from Flaho model color. Just tin down once and more with a little bit of water. Just quick firing this in. Again, being careful not to get any any uh, overspill onto areas we don't want. Again, we can wipe it away if it comes down to it. Still, no point creating work for yourself. Just a little bit of patience and brush control will just make life a lot more easy and smoother for you.
was using some German camo uh, beige here from again from Model Color. The paint in the haversack or the uh, rucksack here. The aerial recognition panel is a mixture of, I believe it's Mephiston Red and Scarlet. And I also mix a bit of German Orange into it as well. Just, there's a slight orange hue to this colour. I still haven't really figured out a mixture that I really think is accurate because I've seen these go from like an orange, scarlet or pink right down to like an orangey pink. It depends um, on who's doing it. Now I do recognise that this aerial recognition panel might be a bit too big for some. However, some of the photographs I've seen, some of these panels are quite large. And just moving on to doing the um, Pioneer tools on the back of the Fakel. And for this I'm just going to use Vallejo New Wood. And again, just being very careful to paint this in. All the metallics were done with Vallejo, um, or what was it? It was Vallejo uh, Metallic Black, which is a really good colour for doing shovels and what have you. You'll also notice um, that I've actually put a wash over our, our tarps and our bags, and that's just a bit of Agra's Earth Shade, I'll just give it a quick coat. Something I kind of forgot about. I forgot to film that part, but literally just a wash as I do normally with any of my other tutorials. Just add a bit of immediate shadow. And I'm not going to put too much effort into the into the tarps because we're, I'm only weathering around it and we're going to blend it a different way. And just cleaning away any excess I get there if I get a bit overspill. I'm just going to apply a wash of Agrat's Earth Shade over that once they're dry to the touch. If you apply about two washes, allowing each layer to dry, you'll get a really nice wood effect that way. Then to add a bit of a highlight as well as blend them and weather them at the same time, I'm just going to take some Tamiya Model Master Set A and some of their light dust and just use a sponge applicator and just, just quickly like dry brushed it almost with it and that's how I'm going to get both a weathered and a highlighted effect all at once and that's why I didn't really spend a lot of time highlighting these by hand because that's how it's going to do it and I find it works just fine for fecal um, storage So with our stowage out of the way, I'm going to take some Vallejo uh, Light Rust, which is a paint. I'm going to water it down about 80% just with tap water, and I'm going to make a wash out of it. And I'm just going to apply this colour to some of the metallic like tools and what have you, as well as these track links, and just give it a very light rust wash. However, the thing with rust is less is more, don't go mad with this, a lot of people go a bit too crazy at rust. These vehicles weren't as rusty as one would think. Um, with the exception of maybe like spare track links that have been just left on the rain for long periods of time and they haven't been in friction. So I'm just applying this wash to these track links, again just blending it in. Just going to touch a bit of rust into the deflector, which we're totally going to hide with pigment later on. But at the time, I didn't know how intense we we're going to weather this. 
So with all our detail painting and oils done, we're going to add a, a dust layer. And for that, I'm going to take my airbrush, heavily water or heavily thin down a racky sand from model color, and I'm going to spray this dust layer. Really, I'm um, focusing on the lower hull. You can use Tamiya Buff for this too. Um, I quite like using a racky sand because it's a real light sand, a kind of sand dust color. And I had thinned this quite heavily with uh, airbrush thinner. Any place I feel if it spatters or um, it's a little bit too light, I just will literally run or roll a cotton swab or cotton bud over it. And it'll actually give me a very nice dusty effect. So don't panic if it goes wrong, just use a, a cotton bud and literally just roll the Q-tip over it and you're fine. Just blending in some of that dust. So now it's time for the uh, interesting and cool part that I was really looking forward to with this build. So we're going to start doing mud and dirt effects using AK's enamel washes and just a straight up plaster of Paris you can buy from a hobby shop or art shop. So I'm just going to take some plaster of Paris onto a palette. It's going to mix up these enamel washes. I have had these for a long long time so they do need to be mixed quite a bit. I'm just going to pour a small amount onto our plaster mixture and mix it up. I'm looking really for like a porridge-like consistency. That's the best way to, to describe it. I don't quite want it to be a paste. And as you can see here, I'm taking some static grass and I'm mixing that into my mixture as well. Just to add a bit of fiber. I'm going to take an old brush, which is kind of um, frayed, and I'm going to basically use the airbrush and just blast air through the brush and spit um, mud onto the fagel. It's a very realistic way of applying mud to um, your fagels because it's literally how they get onto the machines in real life. They, they go through a puddle that splashes up onto the fagel and then it builds up over time. If you don't have an airbrush for this, if you just take a stiff brush do the exact same thing, uh, make your mixture and pack your brush with that mixture and just literally flick the bristles of your brush, you'll do exactly the same effect. Now, if you haven't done this before, I would recommend that you take a test piece and experiment on air pressures and also the, more so the angle and how you hold your brush. Because the angle you hold and the direction you spray from will vary the intensity and the direction of your mud splatters. So I'm keeping this at a pretty like perpendicular angle to where I'm, where I want the mud. And then when I'm trying to get my mud down into the buggies, I'm almost spraying down into it, as in I hold the brush and the airbrush behind it. So just keep that in mind. You're projecting your mud, so just be mindful of that when you're when you're doing it. I'm also actually brush painting in some of it as well, just to build it up in places and then using my trusty cotton bud just to wipe away any excess I don't want. As you can see, I'm really focusing a lot of my earth and mud so far into the lower hull naturally and the buggies. I really want to weather up my buggies. Back to our Kursk mud from AK, but I'm actually mixed up more of the Kursk mud and a lower amount of, of plaster. Because you can vary the intensity by the ratio of plaster to enamel wash you, you mix. Now we will be switching colour in a few moments, but the thing with mud is you start with the brightest colour first and work your way to the darkest. It's 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 in, it's in reverse. Prefer use when it comes to highlighting to work from darkest to light. When you're doing mud, it's in reverse because the darkest mud is the freshest mud and obviously the lighter stuff has been there for a while because it's dry. So it's in reverse, just keep that in mind. Once again, I'm just slowly working this up and just building it up in places. I'm not trying to do it all in one go. As you can see, you get some very realistic effects from using the, the airbrush to push the, the pigment onto the fagel. Now I'm going to take some AK Dark Mud.
again it's going to mix up exactly the same i'm going to even be more disciplined with this color i'm going to refocus it down to the lower elements of our suspension and our lower hull here and i'm just slowly just building it up again just taking my time you'll be a bit patient with this but the end result is well worth it also, I just forgot that I, I I forgot to mention something. Before we even started this layer, I mac coated our model. So um, do mac coat before you do this, because uh, again, there's going to be a, a glossy quality to these pigments to give us that muddy effect. And I don't want to lose that by applying the mac coat on top of it. So that's something I forgot to mention. I'm sorry, guys, if uh, for not mentioning that earlier. But hopefully, uh, you caught it before it was too late. And if you do accidentally mac coat over it, you can always come back with some gloss varnish or some wet effects like we do later on to uh, create that wet mud effect. So not to worry, there is ways around everything. So you can see that the muddy effect is really taking hold now. And I'm just slowly working it up and I'm focusing the wetter color or the wetter, the darker color onto the lower elements of the hull and projecting it up. Again, I'm not being too precious about it. You know, this this vehicle is after maybe moving through a, a, a muddy forest lane, it's going to get dirty. You know, again, I know this type of extreme weathering is not for everyone, and that's fair enough. But still, um, it's probably the most realistic way of doing it if that's uh, the type of weather technique you like or the weathering look you like. So the last layer of mud we're going to add is fresh mud and this actually has a satin quality there's where there's a shiny or reflective quality to this and this is going to be like the freshest the newest mud splashed up onto the fecal again i'm going to mix some plaster of paris into it and a small amount of static grass to give it a bit of texture and i'm really actually going to really br brush apply this i've made this texture much thicker it's almost like a paste and i've mixed quite a bit of static grass and what have you into it and i'm really just going to stipple it into the lowest recesses of the hull And what gives us convincing and mud effects is when you have different qualities and different tones. And the handy thing as well, and the cool thing about using enamel washes is you can mix them together on your palette. You don't have to use them out of the out of the jar. You can mix them together, create lighter or darker tones with those colors. Just like if you mix your paints, for example, it's exactly the same principle. So you, you have a lot of a lot of flexibility and freedom to um, basically to your taste, your to your weathering tastes. There's something there for everyone. And you can see how thick my mixture is like it's I'm literally having to stipple it on Again, I can make lesser aggressive mixtures again by having more pigment or more wash than in plaster. So you can give and take as you wish. It's really up to you. So you can get a lot of different textures if you wish, and just creates a little bit more like interest. So I'm just going to take this slightly more watered down mixture where there's not as much plaster in this mixture. I'm just going to start working it into pretty much the same places that we've done before, just to reinforce it. And I'm just kind of thinking to myself, where would mud gather? Like, where would mud get caught? Especially up around the skids 
for the at the top of the buggies. A lot of mud will collect on the top of buggies. Again, look at photographs of Sherman's or Fifi SS suspension and actually see where the mud gets caught. You will also notice I keep wiping away any of the mud mixture I get onto the tire rubbers or the, the, the tires of the wheels because they're going to get rubbed clean by the, the friction the tracks tra traveling over them. So just apply enough that obviously the, the wheels are muddy but they're not like caked in mud. That's, that's just my um, my standard. You can like put mud onto the tires of the wheels too and it will be accurate. And since I have these mixtures made up I'm, I'm going to stipple them on quite heavily onto our onto our tracks here and again you can even see that I, I can sprinkle static grass onto our mixture and then stipple it and lock it in place. So again this is our uh, mud effects. I'm not putting any Kursk earth onto the tracks it's only going to be dark and fresh mud. And I've made pretty thick mixtures basically I put a lot of plaster and static grass into it and I'm just taking a stiff brush like an old brush here and I'm just stippling it on. You can see it is quite messy, and that's why having the gloves is a big uh, benefit, just to keep your hands clean. You don't want any, any of this enamel get into your into your skin. taking some of our fresh mud again I've made a very thick mixture as you can see here it's very gloopy there's a lot of plaster and a lot of static static grass in that mixture and I'm just stippling it and kind of painting it on and I've been kind of random I'm allowing some of the the track rubber to show through in certain places more or less lightly painted in the inner track. Again, there's going to be more friction between the wheels so I don't want to have too much build up on the inner parts. Again, that's up to you. You can go, you can weather as, as, as hard, as heavily as you like. It's really up to you. I tend not to weather the inner tracks too intensely because in my logic it's just that they get rubbed clean. see how thick that mixture is you know and I, I wanted a texture off it I wanted to have like a, a caked on mud effect So with our mud layers allowed to dry, I really want to re-establish that wet, wet mud effect and for that I'm going to use AK wet effect uh, fluid, which is basically um, a gloss. It's a, a gloss fluid. So if you don't have this, you can just use a, a gloss varnish and paint it on. But as you can see here, I'm, I'm really just applying the wet effects to the, the fresh or dark, or sorry, should I say fresh mud, no, the, the darkest mud color we have, because that's the freshest mud. I'm putting it down pretty heavy. But you can see here it's really given that really muddy and very just like nasty mud effect and that's exactly what we wanted. And it just re-establishes that like you know it's driven through um, a muddy lane or something like that. It's a pretty simple step but you can see it makes a massive difference. Again, I'm really just focusing into the lower elements of the hull. Basically, any areas I feel like would actually get wet, if you will. You know, just just think about what you're doing.
again focusing a lot onto the, the back of the vehicle here I could have put some into the deflector but it's kind of more or less focused on the bottom of it So once this has been allowed to dry, our fecal is complete once you attach your tracks. So I really hope you found this really interesting and give you some ideas on how to do mud effects of your own. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to Scale Modeling Now for allowing me the opportunity to build this model and uh, experiment with various different te techniques. So do join me next time when we'll be doing other builds in the future and more Allied Armour and Sherman Armour builds. I've been Shane, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.